spoons. Now I'm going to cover as much as possible in this video to highlight any potential problems that you may encounter to hopefully help this process go as smoothly as possible for you. So if you're not very tech minded then the length of this video shouldn't be too much of a problem for you. Plus I'll also be adding timestamps or chapters below so you can quickly jump to whatever part of this video you want to straight away. If on the other hand you're a little more tech savvy and you want a real quick fix video then take a look at the shorter version of this video in the first link in the description down below this video. So just a few things to consider before we get started. This process of restoring your iPhone back to its original factory settings through iTunes does not allow you to unlock your iPhone so you can use it on any network, okay? So please don't ask me that in the comments as you will not be able to use your iPhone on any network as a result of what you're about to do here today. Another thing to be aware of, guys, is that all your files such as contacts, videos and photos, etc. will all be permanently deleted from the iPhone 7 you're about to restore. So hopefully you've backed up all your files on iCloud or some other external storage such as a computer or other external hard drive. The thing is guys, you can't use the iPhone anyway, whether you've backed your files up or not, so you really have no choice if you want to use your iPhone 7 again. The only things that will not be deleted is your Apple ID and activation lock. If you don't already know, the activation lock is an Apple security measure in case you lose your iPhone and somebody gets hold of it and tries to do exactly what we're about to do in this process and restore it to its original factory settings so they can use it. So if this message comes up on your iPhone as it did for me on this old iPhone 5 SE that I restored in a previous video incidentally, then you'll need the Apple ID and password for that iPhone. Or you will not, to the best of my knowledge, be able to complete this restore process. I'll add links below for more information on the Apple ID and activation lock, as well as various Apple support numbers for various countries if you get stuck and need further help. So check those out below if you need them. You're going to need a computer or laptop for this process, but if you don't have one, you could go to a friend's house and use theirs or go to an Apple store or Apple authorized service provider and use one there. You'll also need a decent internet connection or this process may take some time. It will still work if your internet download speed is slow. It will just take longer of course and it can cause some problems if you aren't aware of them which incidentally is exactly what happened to me so I'll cover that later on when we come to it. Now you're obviously going to need iTunes on the computer being used and if you haven't already got iTunes on your computer you'll need to download it. iTunes is completely free to download and I've added two links below depending on what operating system you have and use on your computer, which as you know will more than likely be either an Apple Mac operating system or a Microsoft Windows operating system. Now just as a side note, in most cases when you download something, your computer or the download site lets you know what option to choose regarding what type of system you have, such as 32-bit or 64-bit for example. But if it doesn't and you're using a Windows operating system and you want to find out what type it is etc. So you can select the correct version of iTunes to download. Simply go down and click on the start menu. Go up and click on settings. Click on system. Then go down and click on about. And there you can see my operating system which is Windows 10 Home. And what type it is which is a 64 bit. Now I've never used an Apple operating system so I can't demonstrate that to you. So Mac users can pause and read this from the Apple support website which I'll also add a link to down below if you want to go and look at this page for yourself and you do want to know exactly what operating system you're currently running on your computer. Again links below for those iTunes downloads for both Windows and Mac and be sure to save this video so you can come back to it as you must restart your computer after any software update or download, whatever it is in order for that update or download to take effect. Now, if you already have iTunes on your computer, just make sure you have the latest version by going to the top, clicking on help and scrolling down to check for updates. As you can see, I already have the latest version of iTunes installed, so I'm good to go. But as I've already said, if you do need to update to the latest version, make sure you restart your computer for it to take effect. 
OK, so you'll need to connect the iPhone to the computer using a charging cable for your iPhone. And before you do, just remember if you have any problems at all going through this process, simply repeat the process until it works, as it can sometimes be a little bit temperamental. Also, try changing the cable, as a faulty cable is a very common problem, which will definitely stop this process from working. And depending on the laptop or computer you're using will determine whether or not to use a standard iPhone 7 charging cable like this, also called a USB-A to lightning cable, and what would have originally come with the iPhone in the box, although it would have been white, as this red one is just another one that I've purchased. The other type of cable you may need to use is a USB-C to lightning cable like this, which later laptops and computers now support. So if you have an older type of laptop like this old Lenovo that only has these USB-A ports, then you just connect the original charging cable directly like this. Now my Dell laptop, which I'm going to use for this process, doesn't have a USB-A socket, so I have to use either a USB-C to lightning cable, or if I want to use the original older type cable that would have come with the iPhone 7, I'll have to use this USB-C multi-port adapter so I can connect it which is exactly what I'm going to do, as I also want to use an external mouse, so I'll need the extra sockets. Links below for these adapters should you need one. OK, so open iTunes on your computer, and if you have an Apple ID, then sign in, as it will definitely help things to run smoother, especially if the iPhone you're about to restore is connected to your Apple ID. That said, you don't have to sign in for this process if the iPhone isn't connected to an Apple ID, Again, any problems, just repeat the process until it works or try changing the cable. OK, now again, hoping not to confuse anyone too much, but there's two ways that you can do this next part of the process, which is connecting the iPhone to the computer. And I want to go through both methods, as sometimes one way works better for some people than the other. One way is to start with the iPhone off. So make sure your iPhone's off, in which case with iTunes open, and the cable connected to the computer, but not to the iPhone just yet. Press the volume down button as you connect the iPhone's lightning cable. Hold the volume down button in until the iPhone comes on and the recovery mode screen comes up. Now, don't be tempted to let go of the button if you see the Apple logo. Keep the volume down button pressed in until you see this recovery mode screen on the iPhone. If it doesn't work and the connect to iTunes screen comes up again, then repeat the entire process or try changing the cable like I've said, or try the next method. Okay, so the second method is helpful if the first method doesn't work as I've said, but it can also be done this way from the beginning. So with the iPhone now on and connected to the computer, press and hold in both the volume down button and also the on off button both at the same time. So that's the volume down button and the on off button. Hold them both in at the same time. This restarts the iPhone, okay? So keep both buttons pressed in until the iPhone turns off and on again until the recovery mode screen comes up. As before, don't be tempted to release the buttons if and when the Apple logo comes up, okay? So keep those buttons pressed in until you see that recovery mode screen come up on the iPhone. Now when this is happening on the iPhone, this is what should be happening on iTunes on your computer, where a message comes up saying the iPhone is in recovery mode and iTunes is downloading the software for the iPhone. Now just a quick heads up, my internet download speed was very slow during this process for some strange reason or another, and as you can see here, and where you can also check yours, which is to just go up to the little down pointing arrow in the top right hand corner of iTunes, just click on it, and you can see at what stage the download of the new software is for the iPhone. The thing is, because this was so slow, iTunes kept going back to the home page and the iPhone kept going back to the screen that said iPhone is disabled, connect to iTunes. So if you have a slow internet download speed, this will more than likely happen to you. And if it does, it could be a little confusing to some of you. So you must wait until the software download is complete, okay? And when it is, if the recovery mode screen has disappeared on the iPhone, just restart the iPhone again while it's connected by its cable by pressing and holding the on off button and volume down button together as previously demonstrated until the recovery mode screen comes back on again. 
Okay, so once this software is downloaded and the iPhone is connected, this message will come up telling you it's contacting the update server, followed by this message telling you what you already know, that there's a problem with the iPhone. You have to then select restore, then a repeat of the previous message comes up again possibly, then this message appears asking you if you're sure about restoring the iPhone to its original factory settings and of course you are which is why you're here so you select restore and update. Now as you can see the iPhone screen changes to this showing you the progress as iTunes goes through different stages that can take anything from 5 to 10 minutes to 20 minutes or more. So a little patience is required so the first stage being extracting the software, then preparing iPhone for restore, followed by verifying iPhone restore with Apple, then preparing iPhone software for restore, then restoring iPhone software, followed by verifying iPhone software, then verifying iPhone restore, followed by restoring iPhone firmware. Then when complete, this message comes up telling you your iPhone has been restored to factory settings and to leave the iPhone connected until it restarts. Then this message pops up giving you the option to sync the iPhone with iTunes if you so wish, where it gives you options to select or not to select to synchronize with your existing iTunes account if you have one. Alternatively, just ignore this and close the iTunes window as I did, then set up your iPhone 7 as you would normally do if it was straight out of the box, selecting your preferred options. Well, there you have it, a fully restored iPhone 7. I hope this has helped, and if it has, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel to help us to grow. And if you have already subscribed, Thank you very much. It really is very much appreciated. And guys, try not to forget your passcode. Thanks a lot. Take care. See you soon.